Hi, I'm Choi Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and the Frederick Health Hospital. Uh, we have had a lot of discussion lately about what to do with our octogenarians and nonagenarians with ACS. How aggressive uh, should we be with these patients? Uh, will your great grandma benefit from going to the cath lab? So uh, the patient is a 92-year-old woman uh, with uh, high blood pressure, cholesterol, uh, chronic kidney disease, and diabetes. Uh, she gets around in a rollator, but otherwise remains uh, pretty independent. Uh, for the past two to three weeks, uh, she has been having chest tightness, but only with exertion. Um, the frequency and intensity have been getting worse, so her daughter uh, made her come to the emergency room. And in the ED, she was in no distress, she was very pleasant, and her uh, vitals were uh, stable. Her uh, ECG was unremarkable. Um, labs uh, were notable for an elevated troponin, as well as a creatinine of 1.3, uh, which was her baseline. The echo was uh, technically limited, uh, but showed a normal ejection fraction without any obvious uh, wall motion abnormalities. So, all right, um, you get a call from the medical cardiologist about this patient. Um, what should you do with her? Uh, should, you, uh, should you just manage this 92-year-old conservatively, or should you take her to the cath lab? Well, um, up until recently, uh, evidence-based guidance uh, for the benefit of invasive therapy for older patients have been uh, really quite lacking. Uh, there have been a few uh, post hoc analyses and small randomized trials that seem to favor the invasive approach, but in practice, many of us will shy away from offering an invasive approach uh, to the very elderly. So um, the AFTER-80 study, uh, which was uh, published um, in this month's uh, JAC, uh, finally provides some guidance. Um, this is one of the largest randomized trials uh, comparing invasive versus conservative approaches in a very elderly population with non-STEMI. Uh, this was a Norwegian study uh, that enrolled 457 patients 80 years or older. Uh, the mean age was about 85. Um, the primary endpoint was a composite of MI, urgent, re urgent revasc, uh, stroke, and death, and they were able to follow these patients out uh, to a median of 5.3 years. The punchline is that in patients 80 years or older with non-STEMI, an invasive approach was superior uh, to a conservative therapy. There was a substantial reduction in MI, urgent revascularization, stroke, and death, in favor of invasive therapy. The benefit for invasive therapy persisted out to eight years, which uh, considering the median age of 85 years in this study is actually quite a long time. There was a substantial and durable reduction in MI in favor of invasive therapy. The relative risk reduction for invasive therapy was more than 40% at five and 10 years, and the absolute risk reduction was 15%. Uh, what about uh, patients with kidney disease? Well, invasive therapy was superior to conservative therapy in this population as well. There was a substantial increase in uh, event-free survival days gained in favor of invasive therapy. And surprisingly, patients that had kidney disease benefited more from invasive therapy than patients without kidney disease. Of course, this being a subgroup, uh, subgroup analysis, this result um, does have to be taken uh, with a, a small grain of salt. Invasive therapy was also superior to conservative therapy for very elderly diabetic patients. And again, it actually appeared that diabetic patients benefited more from invasive therapy than non-diabetics. In fact, invasive therapy was superior to conservative therapy in all of the subgroups that was analyzed. And the study ultimately concluded that even for the very elderly, invasive therapy was superior to conservative therapy for the treatment of non-STEMI. Invasive therapy was superior for all subgroups, and the benefit was even more amplified in higher risk patients with renal failure and diabetes. So we decided to take our 92-year-old uh, non-STEMI patient uh, to the cath lab. And on cath, the uh, RCA had non-critical disease, and you can see the circumflex and LED here. The circ has uh, uh, severe mid-segment disease, and you can see that the LED has uh, severe proximal disease. Uh, here you can see the LAD a little bit better. Uh, there is a segment of disease in the mid-LAD, but the critical lesion is that, uh, is that focal stenosis in the proximal LAD. 
uh, we decided to go after the proximal LED first, and PCI was very straightforward. Um, we used a workhorse wire, a 275 by 50 millimeter DES, which we uh, post dilated uh, using IVIS uh, with a uh, 3.25 millimeter NC balloon. Um, and as you can see, the angiographic result in the proximal LED was uh, quite satisfactory. And uh, given her renal function, uh, we decided to stage uh, the PCI of the uh, circumflex. Uh, she came back a week later for PCI of the circ. Uh, as you can see, the stent in the proximal LED is widely patent. And again, we see the severe disease uh, in the uh, mid circumflex. Uh, PCI of the circ was also quite straightforward. Uh, we also used a workhorse wire, uh, this time a 2.5 uh, by uh, uh, 25 millimeter uh, compliant balloon, a 2.5 by 38 millimeter DES, uh, which we then uh, post dilated uh, using IVIS guidance uh, with a, a 3.0 uh, NC balloon. And uh, we were happy with the andrographic result in the circumflex as well. Uh, she did well, uh, her renal function uh, remained stable, and she was discharged on one year of uh, uh, that. All right, uh, take home messages. Uh, my main take home is that um, we should really avoid reflexively uh, relegating the very elderly to only a conservative approach. Uh, the latest clinical data suggests that there is a substantial and durable uh, reduction in MI and MACE uh, for ver very elderly patients with non-STEMI in favor of uh, invasive therapy. And most surprisingly, although with the usual caveats of subgroup analyses, the benefit seems to be even more amplified in higher risk patients with diabetes and with kidney disease. As always, uh, as for any uh, complex patient, uh, a discussion with your um, referring cardiologist, the patient, and family will be helpful uh, to tailor your uh, therapeutic appro approach. Thank you for watching.